everybody, I just got done watching TNA Hardcore Justice, uh, the latest ECW reunion show, and it was supposed to be the real ECW reunion show. What I'll say about it straight up is compared to One Night Stand, um, the first one and the second one, this show was the shits. Uh, I'm, I'm putting it on par with as bad as December to Dismember. That's how bad I thought this show was. Um, the, the production was terrible. They had some kind of blue light, black light bullshit on the ring, and it made it hard to tell what was going on. All the wrestlers were quite old and they could barely wrestle. I'm fixing my hair because it's a bit messed up because of my hood. <laughs> because they could barely wrestle. Um, <sighs> you had these talking heads from TNA stars who, like AJ Styles was talking about the Singapore Kane match between Tommy Dreamer and, 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 Sandman, and I shouldn't talk, but he's talking about this match like he remembers seeing it, but he wasn't, you know, it's known that he wasn't a wrestling fan at that point. He, he wasn't a wrestling fan until a bit later on. So he's talking out his ass, and you got that kind of feeling from a lot of guys that they were just, oh, they'll put it on the spot and like, talk about ECW, uh, this is what I can remember of it. Now, the talking head bullshit was crap. It was rubbish. You had ECW guys who couldn't make it, um, Pitbull, Gary, Wolf, in his car, and you can see his tit. I, I, I think I sh probably should have not made my top 10 man tits in wrestling video until I saw this show, because, I mean, if I'd seen this show, a lot of things would have changed, I'm sure. That's how um, bad it was. And, and the blue meanie couldn't show up, so they replaced him with the blue trilly or something, and there was also bad backstage comedy. My highlight of the show was either the main event, which was Rob Van Dam versus Sabu because Jerry Lynn injured himself, or New Jack telling Jerry Mubora she was going to make him his bitch. That was fantastic. I'll go straight into the matches. FBI, which was Little Guido, Tracy Smothers, and Tony Luke, or Tony Mama Luke with Sally, fat dude, versus Kid Cash, Simon Diamond, and Johnny Swinger, this match, if you hear a yepping in the background, it's just a dog. Um, not my dog. I swear. This match, there was some decent wrestling in it, but there was some really bad comedy stuff in there. Two and a quarter stars for that. It was just there, really. Two Cold Scorpio versus C.W. Anderson. This was a bit sad to watch because I've seen Two Cold Scorpios, some of his better matches from Japan, and then, you, you know, looking back and seeing his East W matches, and C.W. Anderson was a guy I like. Um, but they were both pretty old, showing a lot of ring rust, ring rust, having a hard time moving around. Things just weren't clicking into place. Two Cold Scorpio still did some pretty athletic moves. Um, two and a half stars for that because it was better than the last one. They stuck to the wrestling and it was, and it was just average. But they, what they were trying to do was just what they couldn't do. They couldn't move fast enough to actually make what they were trying to do work. Next we had Stevie Richards with Nova and the Blue Tilly versus. PJ Palaco, or just incredible. Um, this match was pretty standard. Stevie Richards is in great shape. Just incredible wasn't. Uh, there's not really much to say about it. It was kind of average, and just incredible won, I believe. And then Sandman came out with his huge gut, caned him, and then nearly fell over. And it, it was a little bit sad. Uh, two and a quarter stars for that. Then we had a triple threat match between Rhino, uh, Brother Runt, and Al Snow. Brother Rump being Spike Dudley, or Little Spike Dudley, LSD. Get it? It's the... He did the acid drop. Um, this match I thought was alright. It wasn't um, It wasn't anything fantastic, but Brother Runt really made it work with all of his bumping to the outside, and, you know, he could move the best of all three, I suppose. Um, and I'll give it, I guess, uh, two and three quarters, because, yeah, he, he bumped quite a bit to kind of make, make the match work. Uh, next match we had Team 3D versus... Axel Rotten and Balls Cajones. Balls Mahoney. Ball Mahoney. Balls Mahoney. Um, this match was... Uh, it was a Philadelphia... Or South Philadelphia street fight in Florida. Um, and they brawled through the crowd for a bit. And then they went hardcore and got out the cookie sheets and the trash can lids and the stop signs and started hitting each other. The only really hardcore thing about this match was... Balls getting power bombed through the flaming table, and that was about the only time it really kept my interest. And I was like, yeah, yeah. So um, two and a quarter for that. It was just average 
kind of shit. I mean, I'm sure it would have been great in 1999, but it's 2010 now. Let's be serious. Uh, next, we had Raven versus versus Tommy Dreamer. With this one, I was a bit worried about, um, and rightfully so. Uh, this was the worst match of the night, even though they probably went on for quite a while and weren't wasn't the worst technically. Though it it was just like well, they started off wrestling, and Raven tripped Tommy Dreamer up and got his head to hit the chair, and Tommy Dreamer bladed straight away, and then they went right in front of his kids and wife, and started. You know, Raven was beating the shit out of Tommy Dreamer and the kids were crying and Beulah took him away. I thought that was just really disgusting. I mean, why would you have your kids there? And Mick Foley's the referee in the match, so... It just seemed really silly to me. I, I, I didn't know what the fuck they were thinking with that. And then they continued the match and they did... You know, people say CGW is dangerous because of the stupid bumps they take. This had really stupid bumps, like bumps that could have broken legs or broken arms. Um, Tommy Dreamer was crutched on the ladder that was put in the second ropes, and then Raven, you know, did a you know thing where he threw him back, and so he took a back bump. If that ladder hadn't actually twisted or you know turned while it was in the ropes, that would have broken Tommy Dreamer's legs, or could have. And then he did a DET with his arms, with one of his arms behind his back, because he was handcuffed. Uh, that could have broken your arm, you mongoloid. It, there was just. <laughs> You know, there was lots of blood, and the crowd was sometimes into it, and they sometimes weren't. And then there's all these run-ins that happened later on. They made the, they, they were just shit run-ins, too. And then one of the run-ins was from a guy who people in Florida wouldn't even know. I didn't even know him. I, I, I vaguely remembered him from, from being around uh, Raven from one of the DVDs I've got. But it, it, nobody, people were chanting, who are you, to him. And then Bueller came in and got involved in the match. We didn't need to see that. Uh, dud. Dud. Dud for that match. It was just shit. Then we had the most... Oh, and I forgot to mention, with the Team 3D and Axel Rotten and Balls Mahoney match, they had uh, the gangsters come out, and that was also a good moment because uh, New Jack uh, smashed his guitar over Joel Gert in his head, which was quite cool to see, always... Good to see your guitar getting smashed. Um, just forgot to mention that. And then we had the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. No, the, sorry, the TNA World Heavyweight Champion Rob Van Dam with Bill Alfonso versus uh, Sabu with Bill Alfonso. Um, it was an untitled match, also. Uh, this match was actually pretty good, and I, I was expecting this to be Rob Van Dam versus Jerry Lynn, and I was expecting that match to be four stars. But this match was Sabu and Rob Van Dam. They still worked quite hard, and the, but the, by that point in the night, the crowd just wasn't into as much of what they were doing. Um, they were kind of dead. Having said that, they both worked rather hard. They both bumped quite a bit for the match, and it went, you know, longer than most, uh, or pretty much all the other matches did. There was no run-ins. There was nothing really excessively silly. So three and a half stars for that and really made the show, stopped the show from being heroes of wrestling. Um, and then at the end we had a beer bash where all the wrestlers came out and drank beer and then they, you know, then there was a chant of fuck you Vince and then Bubba went and got uh, Dixie and carried her to the ring and it was like, oh Dixie, you gave us one more shot that you probably shouldn't have done because the show was rubbish and these fans are chanting fuck you Vince because they actually gave two pay-per-views that were two of three pay-per-views ECW pay-per-views that were actually good uh, this one was rubbish and um, yeah at least there was an attempt at a, at, a, at a proper revival from Vince like he had, things were changed around yeah but you know what it for them to make it work there had to be things changed around and I, I can still remember episodes of ECW on sci-fi that were better ECW shows than this was. Uh, this was crap. And the fans, for whatever reason, were terrible. They were chanting, this is awesome for every match. They Markish beyond belief. If you're, from, if you're from Florida and you went to this show and you weren't one of the fans who were chanting like a moron, kudos to you. Because it must have been difficult to resist becoming one of the, the mob, I guess you'd say. Uh, overall, I give this show 5.5. .5. Uh, Shite.